All right, everybody, we're back for the rest of Chapter 25 out of Red Kayak. Uh, what we heard the other day in our chapter was that Digger and JT had to go to court. We had some new uh, words. Uh, juvenile court is not like regular court. There will not be a jury in there. Uh, we have Master Williams. She's not referred to as a judge. So we're going to pick up with the rest of Chapter 25 now. So let's see what happens. The newspaper reporter, Craig somebody, the guy who interviewed me after I rescued Ben, called again, but I wouldn't talk to him. He, wore, he wrote a story anyway. In fact, there were several newspaper stories, including one in the Washington paper, but I didn't read a single one. My parents did. I heard them shuffling the papers and talking. It's like a nightmare, Mom complained when she didn't think that I was listening. My mother also cooked up a storm in the first few days after the hearing. All my favorite things, cream chicken, steak on the grill, fried rockfish, chocolate chip cookies. Wasn't a reward. She's just trying to bolster my mood and keep my spirits up and maybe my courage too, but I wasn't very hungry. Here's the surprising thing. Dad came into my room to talk with me every evening after dinner. You doing okay? He'd asked. Or is there anything we can do? One night I gathered my strength and I asked Dad, will you ever forgive me for what I did? Ain't nothing to forgive, Dad replied. You didn't do nothing wrong, Brady. Everybody says things they don't mean, and in the end, you done the right thing like I told you. He took a seat at the end of my bed where I was already sitting cross-legged and rubbed, my, rubbed his hand over his chin the way he does. You know, your mother once told me the same thing, Brady. After she left us that time, I said, they ain't nothing to forgive, losing a baby that way. He shook his head. It, it ain't written down anywhere how to respond to a thing like that. I told Dee, I, I said, you needed to get away for a while and then you come back. Brady, I couldn't fault your mother for that. My love for her runs too deep, just like it does for you. My eyes were filling up. I'm so sorry, Dad. I know you are. Dad reached over and touched my knee. And I didn't mean for you to have to pay all this money for a lawyer either. I'll, I'll bet it cost a lot too. It's not important, Brady. He tried to put me off. Tell me, Dad, how much? I feel like I have a right to know. He sighed. Well, he said a flat fee of $1,000. But you know, the money ain't important. The, the money is important. I objected as I reached behind me under my pillow for an envelope with $1,200 in it. Carl had, given, had driven me to the bank so I could withdraw the money from my account. It was everything that I had earned from Mrs. D'Angelo that summer. Please, Dad, take it, I said, offering the envelope. No, Brady, please. I knew the money was gratefully received. My parents needed that money. Why should they suffer because of what my friends and I had done? But you see, even that gesture drove a dilemma through my heart because I also felt that I should have given all that money back to Mrs. D'Angelo. True, I wasn't the one who drilled those holes, but I still suffered from the question. How could I keep anything from Mrs. D'Angelo after what had been taken from her? The weeks be between the hearing and the next court date dragged by slower than any doldrums I had ever encountered. I forced myself through a couple more books for school and shot a lot of baskets in the side yard. I tried to anyway. And then my cousins from Rhode Island came down with Auntie Janet for a few days. We went into D.C. one afternoon to the Smithsonian. Mom took us down to the Ocean City for a day at the beach where we built a sandcastle with Emily and jumped around in the waves. At the Boardwalk Amusement Park, Kevin and I rode a few rides and we ate funnel cakes. But the upcoming court date hung over my head like a dark cloud, and none of the rest of that summer was any fun. When my relatives were packing up to leave, I asked Auntie Janet if I could give Tiny Tim to Emily. She okayed it right away, and Emily was thrilled. She loved that hamster, while for me... It was just a sad reminder. During that same time, the juvenile services staff made reports to the court on Digger and JT. The three of us were not allowed to see or talk to one another. Not that we would have. So I don't really know what they did for those four weeks. I do know that they were both on home detention, which meant that they couldn't go anywhere except to a doctor's appointment or to their lawyer's office. An electronic bracelet on their ankle monitored every move. If they went outside a certain radius of their telephone or tried to take the ankle thing off, the authorities would immediately be notified and they would be picked up and put in jail. 
From what Mr. Anderson said, they even had to shower with that ankle thing on. And I knew they wouldn't take it off. Mr. Griswold and Mr. Tyler might have considered removing that ankle bracelet, but not Digger or JT. And the darnest thing, I kept remembering something Ben said, and I could not get it out of my head. He said it on the afternoon that I had babysat for him, and we watched The Lion King. Now, if you've ever seen that movie, you know that toward the end, the hyenas turn against the villain, Scar, and they attack him. When this happened in the film, Ben had looked up at me and he said, Why are they doing that, Bladey? I had a mouthful of popcorn, but I told him, because he's bad. Well, Ben must have gone on to think about it for a full 30 seconds. No, he had disagreed, screwing up his little face and shaking his blonde hair. I almost forgot what we'd been talking about. Ska's not bad, Ben said. He's just being mean. All right, guys, that's the end of chapter 25. I've posed a question in Google Classroom for you. We're getting closer to the court date for uh, Digger and JT. Will they be put in prison? How long will they be put in prison? What will happen? We're going to find out really soon. This is all we got left in this book. Very, very little. All right, guys, answer today's question. We'll talk to you soon.